Welcome back to another video and I just want to wish you a happy holiday so Merry Christmas I hope you are doing fine and if I don't catch you in the next video also Happy New Year so out here it's become uh, very cold and then warm and then cold again and then icy so <laughs> the sun goes down very early in the day also So in the previous video you saw me doing KiCad nightly with a new bitmap uh, function and we were uh, replicating the C64 motherboard. Yeah, so I'm enjoying the uh, KiCad nightly. It's a bit dangerous. We'll have a talk about uh, that also. And um, if you want to see more videos uh, about this subject, I have done a lot of before. So please see the description of the video for playlists of my previous videos and all of the videos uh, for the different motherboards I've done. Right, so let's get back to it. So how far have we gone? So the schematics is about 50%. I also figured out it was possible put a bitmap image behind the original image. Now I've just moved out to the side because I don't know how to disable it. Like this, so you can see. We can uh, overlay it and then uh, we can draw on it, but drawing on this is it's just too slow. It's uh, useless for that. So what I've done for it is to figure out how was it possible to get uh, everything from the top to the bottom here. If you, if you look closely, you can see that uh, these uh, letters are much closer together than uh, the rest uh, also. So that's how they managed to crimp it together down there. But yeah, so it's uh, really hard to draw on this. So what I've done is that I've just put boxes. So you can see the blue boxes around everything here. But uh, it's nice to get the constellation right because I don't want to be in a situation when I'm done everything is on outside the board I want everything in uh, sorry <laughs> outside the paper I want it inside the paper so uh, you can also see the frame is in the way also so I have to do something about that if I uh, put boxes around things I can um, move it out of the way like this right so the schematic is about 50% and it's really hard to get everything right in this area here. Since there's two sides to this board and it's almost 50% on one side, I would say like 25% or something. So that's where we're at. So it's really hard to get this uh, everything right there. Uh, it's not exactly on grid like the older boards and there's, uh, yeah, there's no straight lines. This summer I contacted uh, Paul Rickards and I uh, was asking him if he could print or plot a schematic for me because I had seen him do that a couple of years ago the KU motherboard and then later the 25407 So Paul Rickards is a pen plotter artist You can find him on Twitter and He has uh, shown me he has printed it out in A0 format It's really really big, it's like one meter so here you can also see the KU motherboard from a couple of years ago. So you can see A0 format is really big. I'm really used to printing out in A3. So individually they are two A1 formats in landscape mode. So anyway, here's uh, Paul's uh, shop, and uh, there you can see my yeah <laughs> 2547 is in his shop now. So really really honored to see that and also there i'm not the only one that uh, contacted him for asking for uh, a copy yes yeah, so you can see how really big that thing is it's so huge so yeah so very soon i will also have one on my wall so thank you very much paul ricketts for doing this uh, it's an honor i would say here you can see the paper is used. It has nice structure to it as well. And this is the famous Commodore logo from uh, 1965. 
So I'm working on Kaiget Nightly, and it's uh, the latest and greatest features, but also the most buggy version on the developed version. So that's the right though dangerous to do the Kaiket project like I'm doing here, but I'm not updating Kaiket, and I haven't experienced any data loss yet. So if I do an update, I might break the project. So it won't load and stuff like that. So that's what I'm uh, not doing. So, but at some point I will need to share the project and uh, then I will have to convert it back. And I have some good news on that. I was contacted by Rob and Chrissy out of the blue. <laughs> I heard uh, Rob, the, you know, the guy behind 60 Clone, because they are doing something similar with the Neo Geo AES. So the way they work is that the uh, Rob is uh, cloning the Neo Geo PCB using KaiKat Nightly and Chrissy is maintaining the schematics. So one is doing the PCB and the other is doing the schematics. And uh, the way this is going to work is that when Chrissy is working on the stable version and uh, Rob is working on in the nightly version with the PCB, they somehow have to convert back and from. So Chrissy made uh, some um, some, um, as he says himself, he hacked together some bash scripts. So basically what to do is uh, search and replace for text. So yeah, so as you know, KaiKari uh, format is just text files. So that's really great actually. So the way they are working is that uh, Rob will pull in changes from Git and uh, that um, Chrissy had made. And then, uh, yeah, and they will check the the, the layout and uh, connections and everything and report back and so it goes back and forth like this so so it's uh, working out rather well for them so um, for me I'm just staying in nightly and uh, later or sooner or later I will have to change so I'm really thankful for Christine for reaching out with the script and everything yeah so on that note I just want to put in some um, speed it up video section here so like we do in this video so see you back in a minute. So let's uh, show you how I work. I'm just going to sh There's a little section in this video. I can also show you what I'm doing also. Yeah, so I put the picture on the right side here because it's slow. As you can see, oh, it slows down quite a lot. But I put out boxes and everything so we know where everything is supposed to be. And after doing that, I move the image out of the way. As you can see, it's now it's much faster again. Yeah. We made a little bit of changes because I didn't like the way it was done like this. Um, so much for replica anyway. <laughs> so the way I work, I think I told you before. And uh, let's just put it up here. Like here, for example, I will try to count the line. So you can see here, this is a normal spacing. I think it's 100 mil between each pin. Here you can see it's a bit bigger, so it's like 150 or so, and this is like 75. So we'll try to maintain that. Try to delete some of these things here so we can get things in order. So yeah, basically we just move things around. If you press M, it will just pick up the part. Press S to regret. Press G, then you can move it. And you can see sometimes weird stuff happens, but you can just uh, play around with it like this, as you can see. And it will kind of figure out what you want to do, it seems. And um, we have the character room. This part on the right side here. Uh, I don't think I can point anyway. <laughs> on this side. <laughs> uh, you can see this is the PLA with a, a lot of other things as well, but it has a PLA. So you can drive all the chips. 
So this chip select on the character room is connected to character room on the PLA, and then you have basic and kernel, which goes into a AND chip. And you know why that is? It's because on the C64C, which is different from the other boards, and one of the differences here, it's a, it's a combined uh, kernel and basic. So <laughs> that's why this chip select is ANDed with these two. I will just route this out there. It will supposed to be connected to some ant part very soon. So I'm not sure if I have, yeah, I have one there. Just don't know if the spacing is right. It seems to be okay. And um, we can see in the image on the left side that uh, it's a bit further out from the ship. But what we can do, we can just drop it onto the wire first, like this. Because if I click it once, oh, ESC, now I get this mode. So I have to press ESC twice. If I click the part, you can see it selects and then can click and hold. Then you can start moving it. Then it will also drag the wires, as you can see. So that's really nice. It's really easy to work with. So I'll put it there. And then if I press W, I will get the wire again. So the largest number of cycles in the instruction can take in a CPU is, is a brain fog. Yeah, so that was of course, of course, of course, of course. And then so let's get back to it. So let's uh, draw some more. And here you can see I've put back some wires that I had to cut away when I moved stuff a lot around. And we get those little squares. And these squares means that the uh, stuff is not connected. A12 goes to A12, but it continues like an anonymous uh, wire on the other side of the ship. And it goes all the way into the big chip like this. So, but uh, why do I get these squares? Uh, well, back to that. Um, it's because it's anonymous. Anonymous. It's not connected to anything. So what I do is that I make a net and I call it the same as the actual net. So maybe the sensible thing to do was to just place it like this and be done with it. That would be great because then I know that this A12, right? I could do that. Uh, but if I want to be uh, replicating, where there's no name there, I will just hide it. I double click it, there's no way to hide this thing. So what you do is you set the text size to zero. And you're not allowed to do that. So, <laughs> But you can set it to a minimum size and it's smaller than the wire itself. So it's, it's in there, but as, as you can see the square is gone. So. Yeah, but uh, as you can see, that was a very slow way of doing it. So the faster way would be to do use auto functions. That's something I wanted to show you. A zero. So you just place uh, one of them out there and then you press insert on the keyboard. Well, for me, it's FN delete, but that could be something else on yours. Then you keep going up to we already have A12, so we're just going to A11. There you go. And then we need to flip it around. So I press M there, just to move them around. But we need to flip them around, so I think it's X or Y, so just try one. Yeah, no, that's not right. So press Y. Ah, that looks better. And then I just drop in onto those boxes. In uh, PCB new, you can do properties for many selected objects. It just will say multiple values selected, but uh, yeah, here it doesn't. So I have to go in and uh, change all of them. So that's a bit boring. Also, another dumb side of this is that I don't know if it's there or what is there. So <laughs> that can be actually stupid. Now all the uh, connections are filled, fulfilled, except here. The other thing that is a bit unfortunate in Kaiket 6 that I was complaining about, even in Kaiket 4 and 5, at least in 5 that I can remember, is when I did the schematic, 
for the 250, 407 and the KMR motherboard, even a year before that, you can see when there, come, there comes a pin up on the bottom side of a symbol, uh, you see I have drawn this. It's supposed to be green light, right? So I have faked it. The reason why I'm faking it because, as you can see here, this is the way I could do it. They put it on the side, but in the original, it's actually uh, rotated, but you can't rotate. You can actually rotate the whole thing, but you can't rotate the text. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you here. So, okay, so it's the end of the year, and I just wanted to show you something. Yeah. I have been using this camera on and off, and I recently started to love it. It's a Sony RX100. I don't know if you can see it there. So it's really has been really great. It's from 2012 or 13. I'm not sure. It's like the old style. It has HD recording and uh, everything. So I'm really happy with it. It gives really nice pictures actually. Also, I'm using my phone right now. It's a OnePlus and I have an older Huawei. They have been correcting me at work. It's called Huawei. Huawei phone. And the reason why I'm keeping this is because the screen is excellent on it. It's a Huawei 2 Pro or something, I think. And uh, the camera is excellent. So I can use this for video recording as well. Uh, actually, I think it can do 4K. And the, that's a, a point I wanted to come up with. I wanted to go 4K, a new computer, new camera gear and everything. But whenever you talk about 4K, whenever you get into 4K, it's a, a huge price jump and people don't really care about your video quality, do they? Take a look at... Uh, <laughs> and this is a compliment, actually. <laughs> Uh, take a look at the Big Clive. I really love his channel, and uh, his video isn't actually photographically like you know good lighting and all of that, but it's it's good. It's it's what you need. It's like from a phone, which it's easy for him to do. You just press record. He actually doesn't have to edit his videos much because he press uh, pause and stuff like that on the camera. And it has the perfect uh, focusing and uh, yeah, it's, it works really well. I think you can stream right out of the phone, I think. So that's working really well. So I really like that and uh, I have a camera. I was thinking of making uh, or buying a used one. That way I maybe can go 4K. But what's something that will help me much further than this is lighting. I think lighting is a lot more important than uh, getting a, a better camera for low lights condition because having control of lights is much better. So I think I will get one that uh, you can uh, mount to the table. Also, you may have noticed that uh, the latest two videos, like this one and the previous one, it was in 2K resolution, I think. Or is it 2.5K? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so, and I thought that was uh, actually quite good when I watch the video afterwards on YouTube. It's because my screen is 2K actually. So it's a 2K screen and uh, yeah, and that's what I like to use and uh, therefore I can get 2K video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the reason why I'm not using 4K on this screen is because the computer is from 2011. So it's really old and I need to upgrade it. So I just want to wish you a happy Christmas for the rest of it and then and a happy new year if I don't catch you before the next year. I was talking about the, uh, in the previous video, I was talking about the, uh, what I was going to show. I'm looking for it. I can't see it. <laughs> but I will, maybe we'll do a video before uh, next year. But I don't think I will uh, make it before that. So. Just want to say Happy New Year and thank you for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.